This is Chicken Ball. Come at us, bro. Welcome back to the Chicken Ball Pod. A slightly better show today. I'm joined by just Mort. Mort, we are supposed to have a full crew, uh, but as you know, Scott and Ryan and obviously Bennett have been relegated. Yeah, no, no. Uh, it's, and it's, you know, it's actually better for the pod, right? I mean, if you yeah. look at just the overall look of the pod, it is more handsome. You know what I mean? It just yeah. like the whole screen just looks better for our fans. Fans. Well, and you know, if we and if we really want to improve our faces, you know, we just pull one of these off. That's beautiful. You know, this, this day and age, if I get a little closer here up to the up to the camera, a little chicken ball I action. I love it. One thing, you know, we may have the worst show on the internet, but we have the best merchandise. I love it. Listen, 2021 is our year. I can already feel it. Yeah. I can, if Sissoko all the other can score, out there, so you can out. we. You look out. Last word on That's Spurs right. ain't shit. Watch, no. watch us. We're coming for yeah. you. We're uh, we're coming. We're coming for all those. Uh, we're not. We're not. All right. Friends. So. Uh, after Spurs had not won a match in four straight games, now two in a row, I think we can assertively say that winning is far better than not winning. And I think if you win two matches, that's considered a win streak. So streak. not only are we winning, we have a winning way. So this right. is pretty, pretty yeah, amazing. It's a routine. I think we're routine. also undefeated in 2021, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, yeah. I mean, I'm going uh, to shut it down now. Like, is this it? Is this the end? I think so. I mean, I think go out on top. I mean, we haven't played you know, the League Cup final yet, but, uh, you know, we haven't lost it either. No, true. And, hey, what do you feel about the League Cup final being moved so much later in the year? I was just uh, talking to some friends because normally it's in February, and it's you know kind of one of those trophies that's pretty minimalistic. It happens early on in the season. People forget Man City obviously wins it every year. Now they've moved it to April, a lot closer right. to kind of that flurry of May trophies. Like, how do you feel about that? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a strange one for sure. You know, I mean, there's – Really been weird gaps throughout the cup. It's like, oh, you got we got a cup match this week. Actually, we have two cup matches this week. You know, there's like a three month hiatus followed by a couple of matches, a couple of buys due to COVID, beating Chelsea, which was hilarious, and then you know now another three month delay. You know, into April. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I mean, like you know, honestly, I don't know how I feel about this. I, I, we're a pretty healthy team right now. I mean, obviously, we can get more healthy, but for the most part, I feel like we're okay right now. I don't know how much better we're going to get by waiting until april right. hopefully i'm i'm more concerned about fatigue and our players getting hurt we have had quite a run of games if you look at our team as a whole and unfortunately as you know i do not prepare for these but it would be nice to see how many matches have we played thus far and how does that compare to every other team in the premier league i would venture a guess that we have played the most matches out of any premier league team across all competitions and that will have in my opinion an impact in april yeah, I mean, I don't have any facts to back that up either, but uh, I do know, you know, with the Europa qualification, which we're not used to playing, like that certainly, like that was, yeah. that was a, a real push, you know, and I think it was back in September, October, where you're basically, right. I think like four matches in 12 days or something like that. Right, yeah, and then I mean, the the the, uh, the Premier League had already started, so yeah, so I think those, those add up, although I will say, again, this is the deepest Tottenham squad I've ever seen since I've been a fan, and I think there's also obviously quality to the depth, and I think... We got to see some of that today. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, looking just just at you know at the Brentford match. So Brentford, a team that probably should actually be in the Premier League. You know, you compare them to Fulham, who beat them in the playoff final last year. Brentford is mm -hmm. a better team than Fulham, and they you know they lost Ollie Watkins to, to Villa. They keep you know churning out these other prospects. Like they are pretty good. Like I'd venture a guess to say they're at least as good as Arsenal. Yeah, yeah, no, and I would go one step further. I feel like if I had a choice between playing Arsenal of this year or Brentford of last year, I would take Arsenal of this year. People yeah. also forget that last year, not only did they have Ali Watkins, they had this phenomenal young talent. His name is Said Benrama, unfortunately, who now plays for West Ham. But again, yeah. very talented player. I was telling my friend Ian, you know, who was on his pod before, I was like, if this match was last year at this stage of the tournament, I would be very worried about them. I wasn't as worried today. Again, I know that uh, like Brentford were like on a 15 or 16 match unbeaten streak, but listen, man, you've got Kane, you've got Sonny. We just got the way our defense is currently playing. We're finally coming off a good win. There's a bit of momentum with us. I felt very confident going into this. I think Brentford played incredibly well. I mean, hats off to them. I think they really put up a great fight. And I want them to be successful this year. But quite honestly, going into this, Andrew, I, you know, I was not afraid. Uh, I knew I knew we were going to win this, and I'm looking forward to the final. Yeah, I mean, you know, call it what it is. You know, we we're obviously thankful to get Brentford and not one of the two Manchester sides. I mean, who we've beaten anyways both times. So, you know, not that he actually even mattered. But, uh, you know, obviously happy to get the, the easier draw now. You know, those two will play each other uh, tomorrow. Not that, again, it matters with the three-month hiatus. But, uh, right. yeah, I mean, there's not a lot to fear at this point. Like, this this is a Mourinho special. Like, he said he was coming here to win trophies. You know, yeah. I, 
both kind of smart to Scott when he said we were going to win the league. For you and I, I don't think actually anything has changed in the past month. You know, I mean, we're, we're so close to the top, but, you know, we're not quite there yet. But to win something, and, you know, I, we were talking about it before, like, does the League Cup matter? Like, of course the League Cup matters. Like, you know, this isn't the Audi Cup. Um, you know, this is a legit trophy. You know, it's I, 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 nobody can give me a reason why the FA Cup is better than the League Cup. Like, it's been around longer. It's not called Carabao. Okay, fine. But it's still the exact same format as winning the FA Cup. Like, how many well, what? Like, you know, Arsenal's won it, what, five times in the past 10 years or something, or maybe not that many times. But like, who did they beat? You know, Hull, like Villa when they weren't good? You know, like, how is that better than, you know, beating Chelsea and then obviously Brentford today? Yeah, no, I mean, I totally agree with you. Now, I will go one step further. I think there's some fans out there who are – who put domestic cups as meaningless, right? It's like, if you're not winning the league or winning one like European cups, you're not winning. And like, to be honest with you, I think there's some perspective to that, right? Like if a team like Man City or even a team like, like Liverpool or Chelsea, if the only thing they have to show for a season is um, a league cup, they their fan base may be disappointed. These are winning teams, winning programs. They have a pedigree of winning. We have not won fuck all in 13 years, man. I don't want to hear a single one of our fans diminish the value of any relevant fucking trophy, right? Like anybody who says we're too good for the league cup or we should be shooting higher. Fuck you, man. You are obviously not a real fan because you have not seen the struggles this team has had and how many opportunities we have failed at winning something, anything. Yeah. We have lost the league cup final. How many semifinals have we lost? We lost a champions league final. We literally have a loser's mentality. And I don't care if it's the league cup, I guess this monkey off our back or if it's the FA cup or if it's the, you know, if it's like uh, uh, the, uh, the Premier League or like the Europa League, it doesn't matter. Win a trophy, get these players who deserve a trophy, the no. feeling of winning a trophy, and then we, sh- we, you know, like we set our sights higher. And I think that yeah. that run in like Champions League, I think it completely warped our expectations. Yeah. That season was shit. We were garbage. Yeah. Remember, we were one match away from not making Champions League the following year. And the only reason. We made Champions League the following years because Arsenal are absolute horseshit and they could not catch up to us even though they had every opportunity, including on the last day of the season, to surpass us. They were too fucking shit to do it. So, again, I do not understand this perspective of we are too good for the League Cup. That's a really stupid mentality. Well, and it is. And you know, something that I, I owned, and not to chase ghosts with, uh, with Pochettino, obviously now at a pair of Jermaine, but he convinced me that, you know, we didn't need to win cups for a long period of time until, you know, eventually I woke up like many of us realizing, wow, we do have some phenomenal teams and phenomenal players and we have literally fuck all to show for it. Nothing like not anything. And like, I'm not saying that I would trade, you know, I, I don't have, I don't actually even know. I would trade, you know, a Carabao for that Champions League final run. Obviously it was great, but like we had nothing. Like you, you can have two things. Like you don't just have to have one, right? Right. We had nothing. And like, you can't tell me that the players, you know, guys like Jan Vertonghen no longer with the team. Like you can't tell me that a regret there that that dude doesn't have any silverware with his time here. And he worked so hard for us. He was such a fucking warrior for us. And that guy put his body through God knows what. To... Yeah. It, it's, it's, you know, that's, it's, it's a disappointment of being so close so many times and not being able to push through. I sincerely hope that we push through something. And if the League Cup is what we push through first, that's great. But we must push through something. And if this is our opportunity, let's just fucking get it done. If, if this cup is so beneath us and let's go fucking win this thing and shove it to the side forever, until you win it, do not diminish it. You look like a fucking idiot. Well, and it shuts up opposition just briefly, um, you know, just to win something, right? Like, just to get something going. And it's not like we're punting the lead. We're in fourth place right now, like, four right. behind Liverpool with a game in hand or something right. like that. Like, it's not like we're sitting, you know, 11th like Arsenal. Like, you know, right. and, uh, yeah, and we've got a great draw four. coming up in like Europa. Yeah, we, we are literally in four cups right now. I think three are, like, you know, we're, like, realistically competitive, and we should have expectations of going deep in those tournaments. Again, I think you and I are on the same page. Winning the Premier League for this Tottenham team is not easy. I think we're still missing a couple big pieces, especially in defense, for really to see this thing come through. Who knows, man? Like, maybe next year, this, you know, that's when all this shit comes together for us. Right now, League Cup, FA Cup Europa. We have to go win one of these three. I would love to win two. If we won all three, you know, I'm done. I might just go and, you know, fucking die. I mean. I don't know. You know like and, and sure, Poach, or sorry, uh, Mourinho uh, is, is obviously tempering expectations, especially when, you know, we did have that three week stretch on top of the league. But again, like I said at the top of the show, like I don't really think much has changed. Like we knew there were holes at that point yeah. in time, right? Like we knew we were reliant on Kane and Son, which is 
not a bad thing considering they're the best strike partnership in the world right now yeah. uh, amongst other things you know having that third attacker to run in behind having you know better passing i mean we, we saw it a bit today here and there in spurts um so again it doesn't really change much for us but you know the match against brentford i think showed you know Mourinho's mentality this was a strong team and i don't think this surprised anybody right like i i wasn't surprised that mora got a start because his goal return has been decent in the other yeah. competitions you know you can't fault the guy fault the guy there you, you know you didn't expect to see vinicius maybe those guys will play obviously against marine coming yes. up this weekend but you know we we saw a pretty full lineup you know where did, did anything surprise you in today's lineup no, no. I think what did surprise me, though, is I think uh, I think there was a bit of nerves for me as the match was going on. I mean, again, I, I expected us to win this. We won this. But you always get nervous. I think the thing that kind of threw me off a bit was we seemed a bit we seemed a bit nervous almost. Right. Like, you know, like it's I mean, we got that early goal again. This is the second time we've got an early goal. We got an early goal against Wolves. We got another early goal. And you wanted to see it go all the way through, right? Uh, and I'm really glad that uh, I'm really glad that we actually saw this one through. So there was like a little bit of nerves as the match progressed, but overall the lineup looked good to me. I think he picked a very strong lineup. I think some will argue that I, like, that like Reggie Young should not have started purely because Lamella wasn't able to play. But whatever, man, we went out there had a very strong lineup. I think besides Stevie, that's probably our strongest lineup right now. I mean, obviously Sanchez, Toby. Uh, you know, like swap, but beyond that, it looked really good to me, and I'm really happy we did that. And I agree with you. I think we'll see a pretty substantial rotation against Marine, as we should. Not to disrespect them, but I think it's important to get a little bit of rest for some of these guys. I mean, Tongi went a full 90, Kane went 90. I think like Sunny got pretty close to it. Yeah. There's one of those guys playing all the way through. So no surprises here, but I'm looking forward to seeing some surprises uh, at the weekend. Yeah, I mean, I, I think, um, you know, more or less, it was, it was a fairly consistent victory throughout, obviously, you know, when they had the ball in the back of the net off of that corner, you know, that, you know, kind of like, oh, here we go, like, you just knew it was coming, you know, we set piece goals. And so it's, it's something that keeps coming up. Um, because, you know, when we were in that winning streak, we we're winning those games one nil. And of course, you know, you, you, you don't complain about the result, all that matters is the three points on the border progression at this point in time. So, right. you know, what, what do you think it is when we have these one nothing leads, like we saw against Wolves, um, where we couldn't get the second and just feel like we sat off like it, it, it is really hard to believe that Mourinho is telling his players sit in front of your own penalty box now now for the next you know 89 minutes like you know what is it that you think is is it a mentality thing like why are the players you know before today kind of just sitting back and doing nothing is, are things just not coming off you know is it tactical what are, what are your thoughts on that you know it was really interesting I think as I was watching the match you saw our players pressing higher you saw Sissoko playing incredibly well. You saw Hoybier pressing high. You saw Ndombele pressing higher. So it makes you wonder, what is it? Is it the tactical instruction is different for a match? Or is it that the instruction is the same of players are not executing it? Again, we're not in the locker room, man. We don't really fucking know. You know like you hear a lot of fans talk about, oh, you know, like Jose wants us to sit back. I, I honestly cannot fathom Jose Mourinho saying after a 12th minute goal, nobody score for the rest of the match. Like, come on, that's not a reasonable thought, right? Like, he's not out there trying to preserve a one-goal lead. He's trying not to lose it, but he's also not out there to win 1-0 against, you know, you know, like, you know, like some of these teams that people accuse us of. I think what it is, though, in my opinion, Andrew, is I think the players are still trying to figure out what it means to play defense as a group and then be able to break out of that formation quickly and, like, get on the attack. Early on in the season, it seemed a lot simpler for us because teams were not expecting a low block from us. They were pushing, 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 and our players were getting behind. We also had three attackers, and I think we got very comfortable with that. So I think what may have changed is a couple things. One, up until the last couple of matches, we had switched to a two-attacker format, which made no sense to me. That was that really terrible four-match streak we had. Alternatively, teams are starting to recognize that Tottenham are playing in a low block. They're not pressing high. So let's just get everybody across, which makes it very difficult for us to break free. So we've already seen a couple changes from Jose, right? We're back to a three attacker front, which is critical. And we're also seeing high pressing in our next, like in our last two matches. So it seems to be a combination of players executing the tactics better and Jose just having better tactics, right? So, I, so that's the way I'm perceiving this right now is it, 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 it's both the players and the management, I'm sorry, you know, sorry and, the, and the coaching coming together and saying, listen, we both need to kind of work on this because it's not working out so far. Well, and I like to say, like, nothing's ever as good or is it as bad as it seems. You know, we probably weren't mm -hmm. as we thought when we were on that run. And, you know, we weren't as bad as a lot of people thought we were on that, you know, those that four-game stretch there, right? right. Like, 
Yeah, right. I mean, lost to Liverpool, um, you know, and it was, we should have won that game. You know, I was talking to one of my, my buddies who's been on, you know, that former pod that we used to do. And I said, look, <laughs> the reason you're criticizing it is because you know it worked. You know we should have beat you. And I'm not saying that, you know, Liverpool didn't have chances, but their chances were, you know, open shot at the top of the box and didn't hit the right. Our chances were two Stevie breakaways and a free hitter for Kane. Like those were three sitters. Like that could have been a four-one game, right? Like that's. Yeah. The, I don't know if you got to see the the match yesterday, Southampton and Liverpool. So Southampton won that one nil, thirty-two percent possession, right? Yep. Yep. You know, yep. and yeah, they countered. Now, what was interesting to watch? It's something that I've been harping on for a while now. Is, is our inability to, when we're, you know, moving forward to not turn the ball over after three, four, five passes. Like Southampton did a very good job of that yesterday. I was watching that game. Like they weren't just needlessly giving the ball up. They were holding possession. And so, you know, whether it's, you know, some of the limitations on some of the players as well as Sissoko played, like we know under pressure, he's not going to do a lot with the ball. So, you know, could we improve in the passing? You know, that'd be nice to see. Cause again, we don't need to have 70, 60% possession, but we need to be able to control the ball without turning it over, you know, so instantly. Yeah, and I mean, I think what really um, exaggerates that, Andrew, is when you have less possession, you those things stick out more because you don't have the opportunity to fix that, right? Because if you're only going to touch the ball 40% of the time on the match and you cannot put three passes together, that's all we remember. If you hold the ball 60% of the time, we remember other things. So you're absolutely right. I think that's a great observation. And I think it's, you know there's an extra bit of exaggeration of it simply because we just don't get to touch the ball as much. Now, today... I didn't look at the final stats, but it felt a bit like we had a lot more possession. I would venture we may have snuck out a bit more. It made us be a bit less than 50%, but it did feel a bit like we were doing a better job of possessing the ball and um, better passing accuracy. I, I'm actually kind of intrigued now. You've kind of got my brain working on something. I'm, I'm going to try to go look. And this is where we wish we had Bennett, right? Because he was the smartest of all of us. Yeah. It'd be interesting to know what is our what are our passing statistics over the last few seasons and just just like as a lump right like we didn't have to get into hyper detail year over year what is our passing accuracy as a group and are we seeing it fall off and how does that relate to number of touches and things like that it'd be kind of fun to kind of nerd out on that but like i said since we don't have Bennett, we're not going to do it this is just me talking out loud no one's going to follow through on this no, we, we prefer to talk about stuff we're never going to do, but it would be of interest. I mean, I think you and I are both in the same position. Like we have analysts that do this kind of stuff for us, right? Like we don't actually dig into the, the raw data. We, you know, we do pretty Excel charts, you know, a couple of things like that, but we are, we're not actually going to do it. Yeah. But I agree, you know, with the passing. And again, like just a pure passing number. Like today, I just had a quick look, 54% possession. Yeah. Um, but again, like, you know, you look at something like XG, like we easily won the XG against Liverpool and how'd that turn out, right? So all oh, well. obviously oh. have to be taken like, like any kind of data into context and so i think that's a good observation like you said like it's we notice the poor passing when we're only touching the ball you know one time compared to another team touching it three or four times right so it is that much more obvious you know it's it's you know if ryan were here he would say just bring in sabitzer and that's going to fix everything but ryan I I, I, like he like his fifa analysis is like insane. like i feel like we need to have like a live stream of our whatsapp group to the world just so we can yeah. see how dumb like all the dumb shit that gets said on that group thread is just absolutely remarkable i have no idea how we have not been kicked off of that app yet yeah yeah i mean i guess that's the bonus of uh, the encryption yeah no i love it and uh and i think it's like who owns it facebook's like i hope facebook does not fuck with that right let's kind of leave that yeah. alone we need that kind of protection otherwise people will know how dumb most of us are yeah, yeah no i think i think that's spot on <laughs> a couple of things that came up uh recently and again it's it's <laughs> Two things, I think. You know, one thing we actually wrote down, but the first one I'll start with is, you know, last year I remember when Spurs had, you know, a bit of a, a slow run. You got the idiots of the world like Merzen coming up being like, well, I think Mourinho, you know, Brett's coming here. Uh, and, you know, Gretz, because now he's not going to have that transfer budget. It was like, it was like a four game stretch. Again, it's not like we lost all of them. I think we, you know, we hadn't won them, but I think we, we, we drew two of them and did lose the other two. And it wasn't great, but you know, that, and then, and Harry Kane needs to leave to have success. I mean, that again was building right. some momentum. It'll slow a little bit today, obviously with the chance now actually win a cup, but what are your thoughts there is Kane? What is he now? 28? Uh, yeah, I mean, he's still quite young. And I mean, I think yeah. that is one of the most tired. That's one of the most tired observations in the history of Tottenham, because we get it every single year. If Tottenham doesn't win, Kane will leave. If Tottenham doesn't win, um, Sonny will leave. Yes, man, we have not won shit for years. And these guys are still around. And I think that's because they do have a passion for the club. And I think there is something to be said about wanting to win with this team. I think these guys want to win with the team. They've tried so hard, they have not been able to get there. And I think that's what they want to do. They want to, they want to win with it. So I don't, I don't foresee either one of those guys going anywhere 
I think there would be no greater joy for Harry Kane than to lift a trophy with Tottenham because this is his club. Um, I saw an article on FootMob just yesterday about how many goals he scored against opposition. I think he's got like 16 goals against Leicester, 11 goals against West Ham, 11 against... All that to say is the guy's been around for a while and he deserves it more than anyone. And I don't think he's going to leave with unfinished business. I think when you look at guys like Bale, who has come back again, Bale was with us for quite a while, right? I think he came to us from Southampton, like 2006, yeah. 2007, 2008, something like that. Right. So we had him for quite a while. I think there are regrets for some of those guys for not winning anything with us. I think if you listen to Van Yeah. One of, the, one of the most memorable players of all time, uh, you know, across many, many teams. He's like, that's one of his big gripes is wishing he'd won something with, with you know, like with Tottenham. And I don't think Harry Kane would allow himself to do that. So I think like Mirson is also the same dickhead who said that Harry Kane's not going to score goals with Jose. And I think mm-hmm. he's like the leading goal scorer right now. So yeah, yeah. It, 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 yeah but, I mean, you can make facts say anything. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, right, right. Exactly. Not to mention the assists, which he's now added to his game at a, at a lot. It's, it's, I mean, I still go back to my hot take from like August when I called the 2020 season for Kane, 20 goals, 20 assists. And yeah. man, he is well on his way. Holy yeah. shit. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, that's the thing. And I think when you bring in a guy like Mourinho, I mean, that, that's a pretty big statement of intent. I mean, the guy has literally everywhere he's gone. If you watch anything, whether it's the, you know, the show on Netflix or you know, um, the, the, the Amazon prime show, same yeah. thing. I mean, like the guy is here to win and you see it. Uh, and again, you know, I'm not chasing goats when I talk about Pochettino, but you mentioned it earlier, you know, not seeing Sun playing wing back or our third choice goalkeeper starting in the semifinal. Like, I, I remember at Chelsea semifinal, I think it was when Conte was the coach back then, and thinking that morning that this this was it, like this was the moment where Spurs moved past and, and won it. And, you know, Chelsea obviously scored four stunners, but what, what the first goal we allowed was what a penalty that Sun caused because he was playing wing back. He does not play wing back. He doesn't know how to tackle players. Uh, again, just like stupid things. And, and it's the same thing with, you know, not bringing in players. Like we know Daniel Levy looks for a deal, but he didn't say, no, you can't have anybody. We know that was Pochettino. And hopefully, you know, the guy learns from that and moves on. But like Mourinho is not like that. Mourinho has been doing this a long time. He knows how to win. Well, yeah, absolutely. And I think he can, he, he wins at all costs. And I think, you know, somebody asked me, like, who would you rather play in the final, City or United? I don't give a shit. Like, I don't yeah. care who we play because Jose is going to prepare us and put us in a position to win. Whether we can execute it or not, that's 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 going to be a different pot. Somebody better than us is going to talk about that and make more sense out of that. But I think it doesn't really matter to me who we play because, like you said, Jose is a serial winner, and his job is to put our team in a position to win. Whether we execute or not as a group, that's a whole different conversation. But I feel very confident that no matter who we play in the final, he's going to have us ready to win that match. And man, would it be fucking remarkable at the end of April to lift a trophy for the first time in 13 yeah. seasons, all in the back of a Jose Mourinho effort. Because guess what? That's why he was brought in. And how incredible would it be for one time the Spurs actually get what they deserve? <laughs> yeah, finally yeah. just crossed the line. A couple I of know. quick hitters. Couple yeah. of quick hitters for you. Um, and again, not even not even just so much about the recent news that happened on the weekend, but a couple of players who were in and out of the lineup, mostly based on injury, starting with Eric Lamella. Um, finally back after I don't know what it was. It felt like a six to eight week absence. Maybe it wasn't that long. Caught partying. You no, know, wasn't even on the bench. I don't think today or the match against uh, Leeds on the weekend. Guy like that. Um, do you expect him to be around beyond this season? I mean, you know, to Lamella or not to Lamella, that is the question, right? I personally am a fanboy. I love him. I love how chip he is. But even with that aside, I think what he brings off the bench is a little bit different than what we have on the bench, right? Like guys like Vinicius, Lucas, Stevie, even Delhi, they offer us something, but it's not what Lamella offers. He can play out as a wing. He can cut in. He's good with the ball at his feet. He disrupts the defense. He pulls him out of position. So I like that aspect of it. Now, if somebody said to me in January, we're going to get a decent amount of money for him and we're going to use that money to get a player that's better than him or at least of his level of contribution. Yeah, man, I'll take that shit all day. Right. Like I love Lamella. I think he's, you know, he's just one of those guys that you enjoy having in your team, but I'm not, I'm not attached to him the way I am to Kane. Right. So yeah. and we can upgrade him, upgrade him. If it's in January, yeah. do it in January, if it's in it, it, like for me, like on this team, for me personally, there's only two guys right now who are indispensable. It's Hugo Lloris and it's Harry Kane. And that's it. That's my personal opinion. People will have their own opinions. There's a lot of incredible players we have. 
But those are the only two guys that I'm attached to. Everybody else I'm okay with selling as long as they're upgrading and Lamelo falls in that category for me. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree with that there. All right, next guy, again, same thing, not, not because of the recent news, but Giovanni Lachelso, a guy that, you know, we're hearing over the last few weeks was chosen over Bruno Fernandez by Pochettino. We don't know how much truth there is. Doesn't matter at this point in time as it is what it is. A guy who, you know, last year particularly showed some real flair, was kind of the one guy at times who seemed to kind of want to be there and was driving the team forward, picked up an injury, continues to pick up more and more injuries. Um, you know, gets back fit, um, wasn't originally Mourinho's plan. Mourinho said, no, he actually changed my mind, which you have to respect. I mean, he's he's kind of like a Lamella, not quite as aggressive, but he gets in there. But I mean, same thing for him. Like um, he's, he's just, you know, just arrived, you know, as of last season. So what do you, what do you think the future holds there? Is this guy going to be a role player or is he going to be, you know, a locked on 11 at some point? Man, it, it is so funny you ask. And, and yeah, it's so funny you put it in that context because I just had this incredible uh, foreshadowing of him being our next Lamella. Uh, quite honestly, if you look at what he's been able to do, he does seem very much like a when is he going to get there kind of player. He is not Bruno Fernandez, and I think no. that, train, that that ship has sailed. We know Gio Lo Celso is not a Bruno Fernandez. And is that okay? I don't know. I don't know if that's okay or not. But quite honestly, he's not Ndombele. He's not first choice. He will never be first choice as long as Ndombele is on his team. And I think to some extent, if like if he goes on a shit streak, other guys will pass him up. He's, he's obviously ahead of Delhi. He's ahead of Lamella, but he's way, way behind Adamble. So what does the future hold for him for us? Like for me, the jury's out. So yeah. if you're going to force me to make a decision, I think he's more Lamella than he's in Dombley. That's my personal opinion. It's, it's how I'm feeling, you know, at this point, yeah. I would love to be, you know, proved wrong because again, he has had, you know, bright moments. He's, he's good on the ball. He's good at driving, you know, against Liverpool, you know, you saw him drive forward, pick off Sun, you know, for the, for the goal. Um, he does play defensively, although it is disappointing that, you know, you can't seem to have them both in the lineup at the time, but again, you know, it is what it is at this point in time. But yeah, I mean, I think that one is just one we, we don't know which way it's going to go, but I think both of us feel that it, again, it is more Lamella than it is in Dombele who, you know, has really become locked on. I mean, there's no really other way around it like i've said before like that dude hides how bad our passing is sometimes by the fact that he can just hold the ball by himself and be yeah. nice before getting the ball up uh, up front um okay last thing previewing so we've got marine coming up on the weekend i believe and then villa a couple of days after that expect to probably see full rotation considering that marine is seven leagues below us um yeah. being a, a, a part team you know all respect to them for making it this far it is the biggest discrepancy at this stage of the cup um, that has ever happened. So, you know, yeah. it's a big deal for, you know, fans to see some of those players. Who do you expect? You don't have to name the entire 11, but who do you expect to see starting just off the top of your head uh, against Marine on the weekend? Yeah, I mean, I think you got to look at a guy like Vinicius. You got to look at a guy like Lamella. I think Harry Winks will be out there. I think on the defensive side, you got to get Tanganga, obviously Davies. Uh, like Doherty will be available. Hart's going to be in there. I think in midfield, yeah. I, I mean, I would love to see Harvey White out there. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, you know, so... Um, I think we'll see a little bit of that rotation. Although, let me ask you this question on the flip. Jose has gone out of his way to pay, pay respect to Marine, say they're excited, said it like a dream draw for them. Do you think he brings guys like Harry and he brings guys uh, like Sonny and Hoybier? And do you think he, like a guy like a Dyer, do you think he brings guys of that talent and puts them out there so the Marine guys can play against them and have a chance to play against these these, you know, uh, international athletes, or do you think that like Jose just goes full rotation and put these guys in the bench, they can find autographs afterwards. I mean, I don't know, like what's your perspective on that? Yeah. Yeah. I'm of, I'm of two minds there. So I, I remember a couple of seasons ago when Spurs played, I forget which team it was in Wales now, but you know, Pochettino said, and you know, there was a certain amount of respect for it, you know, like it's a big deal to these fans, you know, to see yeah. Kane play. Like, I don't actually think Harry Kane did play, to be honest, I could be wrong. I'm pretty sure it's Fernando Llorente that, uh, that played up front that day. So I'm of two minds. I think that Mourinho does understand, you know, the human aspect of this on the other, he's not going to, you know, risk injury if he doesn't have to. I, I could see some of those players being available just somehow on the off chance that, you know, we somehow, fall behind um because Davinson Sanchez trips somebody three minutes into the match in the 18th oh 
but uh, but like I, I I really don't expect to see them start. And you know I think we'd all be fine with them not uh, not starting. You know like maybe some of those guys get a run out, but yeah, certainly Vinicius. You know Joe Hart I think for sure because I think yeah. you know, want to risk Larice getting hurt because as you said I think he's indispensable, absolutely uh, indispensable. Yeah. Um, so yeah, no I I, I definitely see a weekend or a rotated side if you will, but there's certainly yeah. there. I mean I can see you know CV starting again, although I know we play yeah. three days later, so kind of depends on what the long term plans are this season with him. Um, maybe last question though for you this is something that you had mentioned that I thought was interesting in terms of you know not a fan of having two attackers up front having that third attacker seem to be a big thing is that something a position that you think we can improve upon or do you think that we have the players at our disposal now to have that third attacker we do not have those players right now I think what ends up happening with 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 Cessna I mean he's having a phenomenal year right now Hoffenheim I think that was the right place for him to go yeah. I think Jack Clark is somebody who we've looked at that be like, you know, like potentially he's somebody that, 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 that can be like grow into that role. The thing is right now, we don't have that. I would love to see Stevie add goals to his locker. He's had chances. He's not finishing yet. So he's not there. Lucas, he's a flash in the pan guy. I love his defensive efforts, but he's not a goal scorer. In fact, we need a bona fide third goal scorer. So Full circle here. If we have to go in January, what do we do? A guy like Jose goes to Levy and says, listen, man, you have two choices. If you want me to win something, give me one or two more players. If you want me to keep pushing forward and hope to win something, leave me here. I sincerely hope Levy goes out and gets us at least one more player. And if I could pick one position on the entire pitch that I would like to see upgraded, it's that third attacker, Andrew. It's yeah. go sell Lamella. Go sell Lucas and go get that third guy, whoever that third guy ends up being, somebody who can give you five, six, seven, eight, nine, maybe even 10 goals in the league. Remember that year when we had four guys or three guys with like over 20 goals across all comps? I mean, that we we need at least that third guy who can give us those 10 goals a season type of person because until we have that, we're always going to be really nervous when we're up 1-0 or even 2-0. So for me, I don't believe we have that player. Maybe there's someone in the future that's already within our, 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 our ranks. But when I look to what happens from now until the end of the season, I would love to upgrade that position. And does that, does that third attacker need to be on that right side or can it be somebody up the middle? Like again, like you said, we used to have multi 20 goal scores. It used to be Deli Alley. It used to be Christian Erickson in addition to Kane. So where does that come from? Does it come from more in the middle or does it come from the wing? You know, it, it's the way we're set up, though, right? It's, it, you know, it's kind of funny because when the matches start, they always show a lineup in a four-two-three-one. I still think we're in a four-three-three with just a very, just a very, uh, uh, you know, like like our diamond looks a bit like this, right? We're like and Dombele sits quite a bit ahead of Hoybier Sissoko, but you still see him coming into our own half to receive the ball. A traditional right. ten generally stays on the other side, so. I think it needs to be on that wing purely because of the way we play. Now, if you are telling me that we can get a guy who can play a six or we can play a 10, who's going to give us a 10 goals, fine, go get it. For me, I am more about getting more goals from that attacking band. Our attacking band is anywhere from three to three and a half players. Whereas I look at Ndombele as like a half an attacking threat. So wherever that comes from, Andrew, I'm okay with it. But just based on my observation, it, like for me, it would be on that right side where you generally see Stevie or Lucas, um, because I think that's where that's where we seem to have a gap because Sonny's very comfortable on the left. Obviously, Kane's up the middle, uh, you know, like as our nine. And then I think that kind of leaves someone on the side. Yeah, no, that's, that's an interesting way. And, you know, it's gone, I've gone back and forth on it because at first it was, well, Spurs need a defender. We need a ball playing center back because, you know, we don't have the talent there. We get that well. But now I'm like, well, but our passing is not good. Like, I still wish we had a player that just came to get the ball from defense and started the transition because yeah. that's not really – I was hoping it was Geo, but now I'm not so sure, to be honest. He hasn't played enough. And Don Bella, like you said, is kind of half in both sides. It's great. Yeah. Um, you know, but he has to come back to get the ball. He can't be in both spots at once. And he seems to be right. – further up the pitch with both the assists and the goals and the chances created. So uh, now I guess very, very last question is, all right, all right, have you, have you sold out hope that it's going to be Gareth Bale? <laughs> I, yeah, I have. Uh, I, but, but I do believe that when he gets healthy, he can help us in cups. He can help us in Europa. He'll help us in FA. Um, I wouldn't even be surprised if he, he you know, hits a banger in like the league cup final, because that's the kind of player. Is he going to be the 10 goal Premier League guy for us this season? I do not believe so. Not because he can't, 
I still believe that the Welsh wizard has something left in his locker. I truly yeah. do. And he's not done. His career is not over. It's certainly not over with us. But the guy hasn't fucking played in like two yeah. years. Yeah. He, this whole, he has missed so much football and the injuries. And I think the injuries are a byproduct of him missing so much football. There's a lot that has to get worked out in his body before we can expect him to be that guy. So no, this year, I don't believe he's that guy for us. And quite honestly, we should not rely on him to be that guy because if we do, I think we're setting ourselves up for disappointment. Yeah, I think I think at this point, you know, we all at the beginning of the season were dreaming of Sun, Bale, and Kane, and it's oh. not coming to fruition at this point. So I think it, we leave ourselves open to be pleasantly surprised as opposed to, like, I think we've seen this last couple of seasons where, oh, Ben Davies is coming back. That's going to save things. Or like, <laughs> like let's, let's just, let's stop doing that. Like they didn't do it before. They're not going to do it now. Unless like, yeah. like be pleasantly surprised and be open to that. Uh, okay. Well, like I said, we got Marine coming up. We've got Villa after that. Villa, good team. That's going to be a tough game, uh, you know, coming up for sure. Uh, do you want to give a couple of score predictions just uh, quickly, Marine and then, uh, and then Villa? Yeah, 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 I do. So I think for Marine should be pretty comfortable, maybe like a three nil type of a score line. Hopefully it's no more than that. Hopefully we don't, we don't go and, you know, like, you know, uh, like beat up on them. Villa, I'm very, I'm very worried about that team. They're, they're playing yeah. incredibly well. I think Jack Grealish, phenomenal player. I think Ollie Watkins can score. I think we had a good defense with Mings. I, so that, so I do worry about that team. But again, I think if we can go out and we can beat Marine, and I think if like Jose has the time he needs to kind of prep for the player, you know, for the like for the opposition, I still think that Villa could be one of those, you know, one nil, two one type of like goal line. So yeah. I expect us to win both of our next matches, but it's going to be nervy against Villa, man. I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, I think four nil against Marine. I don't see us, you know, ping the net, you know, too many times. I think there's a lot of, you know, kind of the last like 20, 30 minutes, a lot of just knocking the ball around and kind of running it. Yeah. I am worried, like you said, about Villa. Uh, I don't want to be negative and predict a loss, but like they, they are a good team. Like it's, it's a wide open league this year. And you've got teams like that, that just win matches. Like, I, I don't think we're going to lose, you know, seven to two, like Liverpool did, but, you know, but they, they do have guys that can score. And they, again, Jack Bush is a hell of a talent. Yeah. Like he is. And there's absolutely no reason to think that they're not going to be up for this. They're going to want that scalp. Uh, they already owe us one. So, yeah, so I think that's the match to worry about. But this is what I always say, man. You know, like I play sports my whole life. And, yeah. and and I think most of us will feel very confident about Marine, but we need to focus on Marine. I think it's important, yeah, even though they're right. uh, seven leagues below us, whatever the case may be, the last thing you want to do is lose to a team seven leagues below you because you were not prepared for them because you were thinking yeah. about the next match. You never know. That's the why. That's why we love sports. Anything can happen. You switch off, you can get hurt by anybody. So yeah. I want us to focus on Marine and win, but I'm – I'm excited and nervous about Villa, but hey, that's the kind of matches you want to win. You win yeah. a match like a Villa, you get excited yeah. because when we beat City and we beat Arsenal, we were thinking about being on the moon. Right. I think beating Villa this season should feel very similar to beating yeah. Arsenal. Well, it should feel a lot better than beating Arsenal because they fucking suck, but yeah, it's do. not like for me right now, beating Villa should be at the same level of beating a City or beating an Everton or beating the United because they are playing at that caliber. And I think, you know, I think it's important to think of them that way. Yeah. Well, we know we're, we're almost to time here. So, you know, guys, I'm Andrew uh, I'm for Mort, for the relegated Scott, for Ryan. Uh, guys, you know, lots of sponsorship opportunities here, you know, on the show for merchandise. Like you could have your logo above my head right now. You know, thousands and thousands of hits. You know, if I had the editing capability, there'd be a little star right here saying actual ratings may not exist. <laughs> That's awesome. I love it. I love we're on it. a two game win streak. We're going to win this one. We're going to win the Carabao cup. We're probably going to win the FA cup and the Europa league before winning the premier league next year. Come on you Spurs. Come on you Spurs. <laughs>